What did Caitlyn Olsen do to win over her husband's heart? Did 74-year-old Danny DeVito get divorced? And is he going to get married again? Whose relationship started as a one-night stand and continued for a lifetime? Hey, I'm Clive, and you're watching Asa. Danny DeVito When the show launched, he was its main star. Bright, talented, successful, Danny DeVito starred in so many of our favorite movies and TV shows, including Taxi, Matilda, and Ruthless People. Oh yes, DeVito has always been able to laugh at himself and his drawbacks. It's no wonder that the role of Frank Reynolds suited him so well. But let's talk about what brought us here together today. A great lifelong love story. In January 1971, actress Rhea Perlman came to watch an off-Broadway play of her friend. It was called The Shrinking Bride and had DeVito in it. Only two weeks after the couple met, they moved in together and got married soon after that. Rhea and Danny have even appeared on screen together, for instance in the TV show Taxi and full-length movie Matilda. The 80s gave us three amazing children who were raised by Danny and Rhea with Catholic and Jewish traditions, celebrating all the holidays of both cultures. The couples got a few luxurious mansions around the US, but not long ago they sold their huge seven-bedroom residence in Beverly Hills for $28 million. Why, you ask? Well, it's because the couple have separated. In 2012, the couple announced their breakup, but then they got back together. And yes, you guessed right, separated again, but this time it's permanent. Some rumors say the reason for their divorce was Danny constantly getting a lot of female attention, which Rhea didn't like at all. In a recent interview with People, Rhea revealed that even after their breakup, she speaks to Danny almost every day. And after 46 years of being in a relationship, they remain friends. They spend weekends together, have fun with their kids, and stay close to each other. Rhea also revealed that she and Danny would never get an official divorce. After being asked why, Rhea gave quite the answer. What for? I mean, she's got a point. Why would they make it legal when they're still treating each other like family? Charlie Day Despite the fact that Charlie Kelly is not the stupidest member of the gang, he is capable of rare impressive moments, especially when it comes to engineering or music. And honestly, that's no surprise. Not only is Charlie Day a great actor and comedian, he is also a skilled musician. Charlie even wrote some of the episodes and a few soundtracks for It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Charlie is talented in everything he does, so a year ago he launched his own TV show called The Cool Kids, and a full-length movie called El Tonto which will hopefully be coming soon. So, who won the heart of the Hollywood all-around talented guy? They met back in 2001, and later they even co-starred as incestuous siblings in Reno 911. Her name is Mary Ellis, and since 2006, Charlie and Mary have been married. The couple has been together for 18 years, and for 43-year-old Charlie, that's like half of his life. If you're a fan of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, then Mary Ellis's face should be familiar. She's one of the brightest recurring characters in the show. Mary plays a waitress at a coffee shop who is the unfortunate love interest of Charlie's character. The fans know about this real-life romance, so one of the popular Google requests is, are Charlie and the waitress still married? Well, we'll give you the answer. Yes, they are. They're still together, and back in 2011, they welcomed their son, Russell Wallace Day. This definitely makes us believe that this family is completely happy together. Here's what the actor's wife told AfterBuzz about their long romance. The professional answer is, we met each other and thought each other were great and it was very above the board, a very classy relationship. The real answer is, it's a one-night stand that's still going. Glenn Howerton Just like other guys from the main three in the sitcom, not only did Glenn portray one of the leading characters, but also became an addition to the team of authors and producers of this long-running show. Before this project, he wasn't doing very well. All he really got were a few small roles here and there, including the one in That 80s Show, the spin-off of That 70s Show, which, unlike the first one, wasn't the audience's favorite. But after the breakthrough of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, things started taking a better turn for Glenn, like leading roles in Coffee Town, AP Bio, and recurring roles in The Cleveland Show, Fargo, and House of Lies. But let's get back to It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. In one of the episodes, Dennis shares the Dennis system, his exquisite and terrifying way of winning the eternal love of any beauty. Do you remember the steps offered? Demonstrate value, engage physically, nurture dependence, neglect emotionally, inspire hope, separate entirely. And do you remember that girl, the pharmacist, who Dennis used as proof that the system worked? Well, their on-screen relationship might not have lasted long, 
But in the real world, just a few months before shooting, these two got married. That's what the bride Jill Latiano said about her upcoming wedding. I knew what I wanted the feel of our day to be. Romantic, vintage, with a touch of glam. That's exactly what it was. All the cast members of It's Sunny in Philadelphia were at the wedding with their partners, and together they even took a few nice pictures that reminded us of how we love when the gang gets together. Now, Jill and Glenn have two sons, seven-year-old Miles and five-year-old Isley. We're happy for them, and we're moving on. Rob McElhenney The show would have been completely different without each of the cast members, but without this guy, the show wouldn't have existed at all. He's not only the actor, writer, director, and producer of this show, he literally created it. The idea of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia belongs to Rob. It seemed that he was inspired by the city he was born in, which was, take a guess, Philadelphia. Rob and his friends from the cast tried to launch a sitcom, boldly going nowhere. The idea was to make a mix of comedy and sci-fi about the day-to-day -day life of the captain of an intergalactic spaceship. The project couldn't be launched on Fox, but in their tweets, the guys mentioned that they kept working on the project. However, not a long time ago, we found out that Rob and his co-star from Philadelphia, Charlie Day, are to launch their own sitcom on Apple TV+. And the trailer aired in June. Rob is to perform one of the main roles in his own project, and the storyline will be focused around a video game development studio. Well, let's wait for the premiere! And what about his private life? Who stole Rob's heart, and when did it happen? We're gonna tell you about that in a minute. Caitlin Olsen Bold, brutal, and funny, Caitlin is one of the most favorite characters and apparently the spicy addition to the show. The story of this actress reminds us about the stories of her colleagues, always playing the small roles until the Philadelphian sun shined on her and brought her everything, including money, fame, and success. After that success, the lead roles, magazine covers, and paparazzi followed. I mean, just recently, Caitlin played the lead role in a sitcom that she produced. It's called The Mick and is about an irresponsible woman named Nikki who has to watch her nephews and slowly become sort of a mother to them. Unfortunately, the show ended after season two. But Caitlin's big Philadelphian trip is only gaining momentum. We're gonna stop right there and talk about what y'all actually came to hear, her private life. Many of you already know, but for many of you, the fact that Caitlin and Rob McElhenney are husband and wife is going to be a surprise. Can you imagine spending 14 years on set with the same person in the same scene every day? How can you possibly not hate the person who's constantly around? Well, it is. It's even possible to fall in love with a person. Rob and Caitlin started secretly dating during the shooting of season two. In the Armchair Express podcast, Caitlin shared their love story, revealing her first impression from meeting her future husband. Halfway through the first season, talk about types, he just, he was just so easily in charge. He really just has a vision, and he's just a wonderful boss, and he's a collaborator. But at the end of the day, he's very comfortable taking in information and then just making a decision," Olsen said. She also revealed that it was her who took the first step on the Fox party. I had been drinking because that's how I handled being nervous around him, and I would just move in to sit at the game and back up in between his legs and like move myself into his lap. And he was just like, what? What are you doing? That's the other thing about Rob. He's unbelievably direct. Like, honest to a fault. When will Disney start telling us real stories about how princesses meet their princes? I know this would qualify. Caitlin's story is really impressive. She confessed she knew about Rob's feelings towards her way before he found out about them. It was just like, oh, you don't know. You have no idea that you are completely in love with me. You want to have it casual and just date. And yet, you're calling me every Friday night, and you're spending the night on Saturday night, and you're seeing me on Monday morning. For two seasons, no one knew about their romance. Rob proposed to his co-star at a party in Danny DeVito's house in Malibu, giving his fiance a 1920s diamond cocktail ring. They tied the knot in 2008. Today, the couple has two sons, and they're perfectly happy together. And so are we, as we'll soon get to watch season 14 of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And before we finish, here's a small bonus from us. Brittany Daniel as Carmen. Unexpected? Well, why not? Yes, transsexual Carmen has won plenty of hearts. And speaking of the most favorite supporting actors, she's always on the list. You do remember her, right? The spectacular lady who drives Mac crazy. But despite everything, and let's not forget those contradictory feelings, he still dates her. Unlike Carmen, Brittany did not change her sex and has always been a girl. Brittany met her husband at the popular Santa Monica hangout spot at Fairmont Miramar Hotel and Bungalows. 
What Adam likes to tell of our how we met story is that I approached and hit on him first, shares Brittany. Adam said that after Thanksgiving Day with Daniel's family, he wanted to make these people a part of their family. Soon, the actress uploaded a picture on her Instagram with a caption. I said yes! My world just became brighter today! Their wedding took place at the Carondelet House, a traditional Italian villa with modern flair in downtown Los Angeles. Well, Brittany is definitely a talented actress, and we are certainly happy she could find her happiness. Well, that's all for now. Which season made you fall in love with It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Tell us in the comments. And no matter what happens, stay awesome!